happy to have uh, Zoom today. Zoom was a student uh, in Chicago uh, working with Sony. Basically, he was a student, and then uh, he went for a postdoc to Sony. He's now at Brown. Okay, soon we'll uh, talk about dual theories and also about the theory. Okay, thank you for having, having me here. And uh, from the first time I come to CERN, I think that I should work on ADS safety, like string theory. And then CERN give me the problem on quantum hole. And now my work is something like soft condensed matter. So my length scale is longer and my energy scale is lower. Somehow it's not very good slide. Uh, okay, so today I will uh, talk about the uh, elasticity of uh, vortex lattice and this happened both in uh, super fluid and also in uh, like uh, uh, me mechanic system so let me uh, give my outline so first I will give a brief introduction to the vortex lattice and after that I will uh, derive the dual theory of vortex lattice and there's two dual theory not not one and at the end, I will give this, uh, uh, the description of the melting in the uh, dual theory. Okay, so let's uh, begin with the introduction picture of the vortex lattice. So everybody knowing that uh, boson and fermion are very different at a low temperature. At high temperature, they are almost the same. But after some uh, critical temperature, a boson here uh, begin to condense to the lowest uh, energy level. Uh, Fermions still uh, keep uh, separated due to the uh, uh, Pauli principle. So let, let's forget about the Cooper pair and superconductor for now. And so in this picture, it's just uh, at zero temperature on the boson will occupy to the lowest uh, energy. So here is the picture I get from uh, Martin. So you're seeing that uh, fermion like don't want to stay together, but boson at zero temperature, they go there and have a party. So, uh, uh, and when the boson condense, we have the superfluid. And basically, uh, the uh, most sim uh, simplest picture of superfluid, uh, we, you, uh, we describe this by a scalar order parameter where the uh, boson takes the expectation value and then uh, gives the width, width with the phase here and all of the physics of the superfluid uh, appear in the phase. And here we have the, the superfluid velocity. It's only like gradient of the phase. And from that we're seeing that there should be no uh, uniform rotation because uh, rotation of the gradient equal to zero. But so what happened when we like rotate the fluid, rotate the superfluid, and it happened like that. The rotation uh, take place uh, through the vortex lines here. Yeah? And we can, we can calculate, the, if we, we can in, integrate the velocity of the uh, superfluid around a uh, uh, vortex and you have the quantile number and uh, basically on average the super uh, super fluid rotates as a normal fluid uh, in, in average so from this you seeing that here is the integrate of the velocity uh, on the boundary of the container and it need to satisfy by the total number of vortex inside the the, the container from this you see that the average density of the, the vortex relation to the uh, angular momentum, I mean an angular velocity that we rotate the, the superfluid. And this is also how you distinguish the superfluid from normal fluid. So when you rotate a, a bucket of the normal fluid, you see that it's rotate uniformly. But when you rotate the bucket of the superfluid, you will see the vortex. And this idea gave uh, Abikosov uh, a Nobel Prize. And uh, 
So this thing is a Bicosov lattice. Uh, when you uh, rotate the, uh, your flute, and this uh, uh, this uh, protect uh, lattice also uh, observed in experiment. Uh, one from uh, Berkeley in uh, Berkeley, USA, from uh, 1979, and another thing is from uh, ENS France in uh, 2000 from uh, by like the, uh, from the uh, different material. Here is uh, the vortex, uh, the vortex in the helium four, and here is uh, in rubidium. So uh, we we forgot uh, about the the fermion for a while, but basically um, you also have the at, at low temperature you basically due to like phonon scattering. You can form a Cooper pair, and Cooper pair is also boson. And when you at the low temperature enough, you also can condense this Cooper pair to have the the boss on your uh, boss and stand condensation of this Cooper pair. And if you apply the magnetic field, you will see that you will have the the vortex of magnetic field in the superconductor. And basically, it's the same thing actually. So in the neutral flux, you have the uh, Coriolis Fox uh, related to this uh, angular velocity and in the superconductor you have applied magnetic field here you have the Lorentz Fox and they are the same and basically you're seeing that uh, the vortex uh, lattice in the superconductor is very similar to the vortex uh, lattice in um, rotating uh, superfluid so you can you, you can derive the Hamiltonian for rotating uh, fluid, and you're seeing that the Lorentz fork has the same form. Okay. So, any questions so far? Good. Let's move on. So, um, when uh, you rotate the uh, ro rotate super fluid, you you insert the uh, vortex inside, and if the density of the super fluid is much higher than the density of the, the vortex, it will form a uh, vortex lattice phase. But when the number of uh, vortex is uh, big compared to the uh, number of, to the density of the superfluid, it will have the melting of the vortex lattice. And the the, the theory for vortex lattice uh, is uh, in, introduced by Abikosov and uh, Chenko. And basically, in uh, effective field theory perspective, we will add the vortex to uh, to the the superfluid using the boson uh, vortex duality. Uh, and this uh, duality was first introduced by Peskin, and after that by Dagupta and Hapreen. Okay. So here is the effective theory of uh, Vortex lattice. This is a paper uh, by Sergei Moros and Son Carlos Hoyos and a student at uh, at Munich. I will explain in detail each term. So the first term is uh, uh, gay gay sector. The second term is a Magnus fork, and the reason have this uh, term because uh, when the vortex, uh, uh, the vortex is rotated and is moved in uh, in the medium of uh, superfluid, it uh, it has the Magnus fork, and uh, of the coordinate from the yeah yeah. So here U I is a deviation of the the vortex from the uh, or as you know, lattice point. Square lattice. Yeah, square lattice. Yeah. Oh, it's a hexagonal, I think. So here is the, the, the dipole term when the vortex uh, move, it, it creates a dipole, and this thing is electron dipole interaction. Electric field dipole interaction. 
the next term, uh, I, I don't think one can uh, can guess this from the uh, my microscopic, but basically it's an elastic uh, part of the vortex lattice. Uh, it uh, uh, tells us uh, how much energy that you need to insert when you want to deform the lattice. The first part is uh, compression. In this case, is how many how how much energy that you need to put to compress the fluid, and here the shear the shear part of the elasticity. And the last part is nothing but like coupling of the uh, superfluid with uh, external uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, field. Small a u. U is the, uh, components? You have two components, two components? x and y. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and the first term is written in terms of small a. Yeah. It's charged on a small a because you have this uh, this type of interaction. It's shot on the small a, yeah. So the small u has the kinetic term in here, in the elastic. Uh, no, no, no time derivative square. First time derivative, yeah. It's a Mag Magnus factor. From, from, yeah, from small a. Mm, yeah. No. U, U is a U is a displacement. Sorry. U is a displacement of the lattice from the. Yeah. <coughs> Not velocity. Not yet velocity. Yeah. Displacement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you have the second term. Yeah. Magnus Fock. Magnus Fock. Yeah, it's score is four. <laughs> yeah, it's proportional to both, both proportional to omega. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. from the, the 
The rotation of velocity. Yeah. 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 The first term. The first term. No, the no. It's the third term. Right. There are two terms for the field. Yeah. The first term. Yeah. Yeah, E come from the other. The other. Yeah. So the equation is what I The the other one is my minus short. B uh, so 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 B here is uh, the, the equal to the density of the superfluid. The is non zero. It's a background for it's a background for the the vortex. It's a background field for the vortex. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this thing is a uh, elastic energy. When you deform the lattice, you you need to yeah frame it. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know about this uh, this calculation because in this case, I just saying that is some like effective coefficient that you put it in. So basically, people can can raise it C one or C two, yeah. So it's, I think that is uh, everything that I borrow from uh, Sun and, and Sergei Moros. Now I'm saying that uh, I introduce a have like a new a new a new system, uh, and I will dualize this. So first uh, we come back to the same uh, problem, but now you we forget about the interaction with uh, external mag uh, external external magnetic field, but I put it on top of the 
like the the free vortex on top of the vortex lattice. And here we I just uh, rewrite the uh, elastic part using the defi definition of the strain. And theta here is something like the anti-symmetric part of the, the, uh, the strain field. And uh, well, I use the new de definition for the modulus tensor, uh, like the elasticity uh, people doing that. And here is the two, uh, I, I define this through the true projection. And here is uh, the compression part, and here is the shear part. Okay, so let me do some uh, kind of like uh, uh, Hubble Santonovic trick that uh, uh, like uh, introduced by Kleinert in uh, uh, 1980, and then uh, Beckman uh, 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 come back to this problem, and now uh, uh, many people in uh, in fractal community also think about this problem, and basically. From the previous uh, Lagrangian, I introduced the uh, Hubble-Santonovic uh, uh, pi and sigma. Uh, you can see that you can check easily that uh, when you integrate out pi and sigma, like it's just a Gaussian integral, and at the end you will come back to the original Hamiltonian, uh, or original Lagrangian. Now then. C, C tilde here, so C here is the uh, 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 modulus tensor, the fix, yeah. So, so C1 and C2 here just come from the com compression and the shear part. However, because C is uh, uh, degenerate, I cannot it invert it uh, honestly. So basically I do it in the full projection uh, inversions, that's why I introduced two projection P1 and P2. And yeah, so when you integrate our uh, sigma tilde and pi tilde, it will come back to the same uh, uh, Lagrangian. And here, now uh, you, 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 you're you saying that uh, your lattice not only have the smooth, but it also have the defect, and the defect uh, introduced by this uh, singular part of the, uh, the strain field theta and u. And from this uh, Lagrangian, if you integrate out the, uh, the, the elastic part with the smooth part, you will have the conservation law here. And also it's an and fast constraint. So you integrate out the theta, smooth theta here, you will get the constraint and you integrate out the uh, the, the smooth part of U, you will get the conservation law. And the conservation law here is nothing but the first two terms you recognize. This thing is the conservation of uh, momentum. And here is the external force. So that's the first term is uh, just the conservation of momentum. <coughs> Lattice, I can U. And the Eden Fest constraint here is nothing but saying that your uh, uh, shear tensor need to be symmetric. Defect, yeah. And some uh, in 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 some sense, this defect can move, but it has a constraint. It cannot move freely. The the. Yeah. And here, if you do some more few re redefinition, you will see that you can rewrite the uh, conservation law and Eden Fest constraint in this form. And if you think about this first term is a BIT identity, you can solve these two equations by introducing the gauge field. It's very similar what uh, uh, when you do this in the uh, particle vortex duality. And uh, because of the added fast constraint, the gauge, the, the tensor gauge field here is need to be symmetric. And this thing is, uh, 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 so let me 
this matrix? Yeah. The two by two. You have two index. You mean it lies a matrix? Um, not not in this theory. Not in this theory. I will introduce. I will introduce. So here is a dual theory uh, for the vortex lattice, and if you ignore uh, small a, uh, this thing is uh, the theory of uh, fractal. Um, here we have the defect current related to the singular path, and uh, uh, this one is uh, the S here is uh, uh, free. Uh, Disclination in uh, uh, elasticity, and here is a Berger vector related to the dislocation in uh, elasticity, and um, basically the disclination is as uh, we want. Yeah. Because it's singular, it's not. Uh, it it not. It have it not not single value. Yeah. Where is that? And here is the physical definition of uh, disclination. So in, uh, in the usual lattice, you have like a six bonding, but here you have like seven. And in this thing, you have like five. So this thing is a minus uh, disclination, and this thing is a plus disclination. And this location is nothing but uh, when you rotate, uh, when, you, when you go around, you miss a, a, a path. So here, when you go three here, three here, three here, three here, you come back to the same point. But when you do in this side, when you three here, three here, three here, and you go up three, you, you gain another uh, the vector. So this thing is a defect in the, um, in the lattice. And basically, from this uh, picture, you're seeing that the dislocation can be the combine of uh, this disclination with plus and minus side. And basically, you can think of this location is a dipole of, uh, uh, is a dipole of disclination. And the total, uh, total disclination density, it have two contributions from the previous de definition, one from the free disclination and one from the disclination bound in the dipole. And here I want to introduce the gauge symmetry. So when you see that there's a two gauge uh, in the elastic part, uh, it's the chi and alpha. So we we want to have the so so we have the elasticity, the, the theory of elasticity. I want to dualize this and study the physics of elasticity in the dual theory. <coughs> so there's some, so there's two, two reasons. One of them is uh, uh, we can understand the physics of uh, dual theory. We have a different perspective. And another reason is that uh, uh, to study the melting phase. The dual theory is more natural way to, to describe it. And, well, another motivation is that uh, 
this uh, elastic carry in the dual form is a fracton, fract is a fracton uh, physics. Yeah, all these carries are so fracton, but it's not easily to see what is the charge and what is the. Yeah, you will see. You will see. You will see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I am focused on the this uh, this location, this limitation. No, it it it's not different, but I, I just give the different viewpoint on the same problem. Yes, that's true. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So in 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 so in in in, in usual air. Uh, so here we have the uh, epsilon i j u i d t u j, but for the usual theory you have u i dot square. It's also reflect on the dual theory. So basically here you have the epsilon i j b i d t d j, but in the usual theory you have the b square. You have to be I square, big B I square. So, so. Oh, it's DT here, sorry, it's DT here. DT here, yeah, sure. I think I copy from the wrong, uh, wrong file. Yeah. It's D DT. Yeah, DT. So in, in, in usual usual lattice you you have the bi square in the uh, in the dual theory. Yeah, without this b zero epsilon. So here it's a gauge symmetry of that, and when you look at the gauge transformation chi, you see that we have this uh, constraint on the current and this thing is a uh, modified glide constraint and we discuss we've been discussed more about it so here is uh, fractonic physics this coupling constant So here I just do the Gaussian integral and it is the same. Yeah, I just do Gaussian integral. You see that the before I, I, I introduced the Hubble Shantonovic transformation, it's nothing but it's a Gaussian integral. Yeah, rewriting the Hamilton as uh, the Lagrangian in, in, in the fancy form, that's all. Nothing non local. So, 
Yeah. So e so yeah so so you have you have two parts like the elastic part will be here so the u u u i j u i j square part of this here You free theory, not the other. Yes, that's true. Okay, so here you, so from this uh, Lagrangian, after you, you equation the motion of this, uh, few phi inside the E here, and so the phi here. You have the Gauss law. In this case, the two derivative act on this like where E equal to the charge density. And from this, you have like both charge and uh, both charge conservation and the dipole conservation. And the, the, the conservation of the dipole um, suggests that the charge cannot move freely because if the charge uh, here move to here, it's the same as you, you create a, a dipole. So, it's, it is allowed, and this thing is a, a factonic physics picture of the elasticity. In this case, that means the disclination cannot move. But if, in, I mean, dynamically, is the the disclination cannot move. So why 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 singularity cannot move? So well, well, in the vortex like this, the vortex is singular and it moves. No, but, but but in this case, I, I, I can I can in in physical system, I can say that the the, the monopole cannot move, but the dipole can move. That's true. That's true. You, you. That that that's true. Let so let let move move to the next slide. And see what happens.
when when you put it in this stack, right? When you put it in this stack. So here is a way you, you, you can think about like the disclination. This one is mean you, you cut the lattice here, you insert like you, you cut and you insert like a lot of blood a lot of atoms there to have the disclination. Another way to have the so the negative one, the positive one that you you cut and you blew it back. So that means whenever you introduce the, the disclination there, if the lattice doesn't melt, then it cannot move. But basically, the 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 like in in, in the duality, you're seeing that the uh, you're seeing that the the, the gaze the gaze requirement that the disclin disclination cannot move is also saying that it needs like infinite energy to to move. So that means if you don't break down the the elasticity, this thing is stuck there. Yeah. So well, from 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 this from this uh, requirement, it already cannot move. <coughs> yeah, can it move in any direction? Like so basically, from this from this picture, you're saying that if you want to move this, if you want to move this somewhere, you need to to add a lot of, of atom or remove a lot of atom, right? So it's not like from can move. The, the 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 dipole can move. The dipole can move. The monopole cannot move. So these are not. The, it, 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 it not the dipole. It's the monopole. The mo monopole cannot move. That's true. That's true. So here is uh, the glass constraint. Here we have the. Uh, uh, this location, it cannot uh, clamp because if you want to clamp here, you need to add an atom here. So that is a constraint for this. And so basically, the thing is that it can like glide. So that means the dipole can only move perpendicular to this. So this thing is uh, spectronic physics number two. So basically, the monopole cannot move at all. And the dipole can only move perpendicular to this direction. So, however, in in our in our model, we have uh, a new modif modification of glass constraint. And the reason because we have like free vortex, so that means the, you can have the free vortex from outside can come, and the free vortex from the inside can jump out. That means the violation. So basically, this thing is a glass constraint. It's a violation of glycon chain by, by also the conservation of the, the vortex. This this one. This is the last equation. I think you should think about this is a conservation of the, the total vortex. Yeah. So so basically the, the, the thing is that if you if you can like the charge can jump out and jump in, then you have this modification. Other than that you you you're stuck. The dipole only can move in the perpendicular direction. Did you write this part in the discussion? Yeah. Well, 
Well, it's, it had to it, it had to be visualized. So I differentiate the Lagrangian with the flow. Yes. It's in dynamic because of the first, yeah, small in this case. Yeah, so basically this constraint is saying that the dipole can only move uh, perpendicular to it. And then from the, from the dual theory, we recover the dispersion duration, and this is the dispersion duration of the chain co mode. And uh, we have the same result for uh, uh, the Kachenko mode, uh, as uh, in the paper by Sun and, and Sergei. And you see that in the Kachenko mode, you see that it only has a shear, uh, shear modulus uh, dependent. And the reason you see that it now clear in the, in the dual picture, you can see that you can get away the, 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 the trace part of the, the, the stress. And basically, you see that the, the Compression part decouple uh, from the elasticity sector. That's why you're seeing that the Kachenko mode only had uh, the energy dependent on the shear, the shear mode, the shear modulus. Another thing that we can create is we can create the vortex vortex interaction. Yeah, 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 sure. So, so, so this thing, yeah, yeah, different story. No, so, 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 so this one, yeah, so it, 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 it can be done if you, if you have the dislocation discrimination, but it need to, the, the, the discrimination and, and dislocation need to have dynamic to, to dam that. So here we also start, study the, uh, static interaction between the, the vortex, the free vortex inside the vortex lattice. And you're seeing that uh, uh, it depends on, the result depends on both uh, uh, shear modulus and bulk modulus. And basically in the paper by Griffop and BEM, they're showing that uh, this coefficient can be both uh, positive and negative. So when this, uh, this, uh, this re uh, summation is uh, positive, the vortex is uh, repulsive, and this screen, the, the screening length here, due to the elasticity, and if this, uh, uh, yeah, it's the screen, and if the, uh, this result is C1 plus 2C2 is negative, the internal vortex can be attractive. So basically, it's something like Tai 1, Tai 2 uh, interaction, at Tai 1, Tai 2 uh, vortex lattice, and we also can reproduce the dislocation, dislocation interaction from the dual theory, and this uh, uh, agree with the paper by uh, Hufford and Bem. Okay. So if you don't have any question, I will go to the uh, second dual theory of uh, vortex lattice. So let's remember that the uh, rotation of field theta here uh, in the dual theory plays the role of uh, Lagrange multiplier to impose an Ehrenfest constraint. So in that uh, epsilon ij, sigma ij equal to zero. So now we promote this constraint to be dynamical by adding the kinetic term for this theta. And we can do in the same uh, hubble Chantonovic transformation. And here's uh, the second theory uh, dual theory. And uh, here because uh, uh, so the thing is that um, uh, I, I, I will show you that the theory one and two are the same in the lattice phase. But when the when but if the vortex lattice is male, then the disc disclination become can move. And I ask this term to expect that in the melting phase, disclination move, that means is the same as the dynamical of this theta. 
Yeah, one stone for rotation. So I, I asked system to prepare for the melting. But I've been showing that the two cherry are the same in the, in the lattice phase. And in this case, uh, we have the new gauge field B and the uh, gauge A is IJ is not need to be symmetric. Yeah. So here, uh, the theory has the cop coupling of this new gauge uh, with the, the matter sector. This first term is also the dislocation density as we had before. This thing is also the free disclination before. And here we have the new term is the disclination, disclination current. It will be zero in the uh, elastic, in the, in the lattice phase, but it can be non-zero in the melting phase. And the promotion of the NFS constraint being dynamic means we allow the discrimination to move what is, would happen in the melting phase. There's some uh, gauge symmetry of the, the, the new dual theory. So now we have four gauge symmetry. Uh, it's a lambda one, lambda two, chi and phi. So the, uh, the gauge uh, symmetry phi saying that the total number of disclin disclination is conserved. Uh, the chi is still the modified glass constraint that we had before. But lambda one and lambda two give you the new uh, the new constraints, that means uh, the movement of uh, here is the, the dis dis disclination uh, current. So the movement of disclination can violate, uh, can have to violate the conservation of the uh, dislocation. That means the movement of uh, charge will treat or annihilate the dipole. So here I show that uh, dual theory one and two are the same in the uh, in the lattice phase. So in the lattice phase, we don't do not allow the disclination to move. We put it equal to zero. This term is zero. We can use the gauge transformation lambda i to eliminate bi. And here, here we are seeing that uh, from so so this thing is also so gone. And you are seeing that the anti-symmetric part of A, I, J gap out and A become uh, symmetric again. And also you are seeing that from this term, uh, uh, A zero I will be equal to, sorry, this thing should be B I, B I of B T. And if we rename B T to phi, we get back to the same theory. So the two theory are the same in the uh, uh, lattice phase. But uh, basically, the dual theory two is a natural language for melting. Any questions so far? So now I will study the the uh, melting of Wigner uh, Wigner lattice. So basically, we have uh, one step that uh, uh, convert from the vortex lattice to Wigner lattice, but uh, the conclusion have still have some caveat. I will skip this step, but let's study the, the, the melting of Wigner lattice. So here is the Lagrangian of the Wigner uh, lattice. It's the same as the vortex lattice without the, the gauge sector here. Basically, then you do the dual theory, you, you, you do the, the, the hubbard Shantonovic, the same, the same process, you have a new theory. So it's, it's, it's mostly the same as the, the, uh, the dual theory for the vortex lattice, except the, the sector for small a. And then now we add the uh, dislocation field into the problem. And uh, per side D1 is a dis, uh, dis clean, sorry, should be dislocation, sorry. So Psi 1 is a dislocation field in x direction, and Psi D2 is a dislocation field in y direction. And here we define the covariant derivative of this. So the, the dislocation field coupled to the 
uh, the, the tensor field, but it's also coupled to small small B field because it is a dipole of uh, uh, disclination. So the, the 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 last term, the coupling of the dislocation field with B is nothing but the coupling of the dipole with uh, this gauge field. And, and here we introduce the uh, Lagrangian for this uh, this location and this pi here, just to make sure that the uh, this location cannot move, it cannot climb, it can only glide by this uh, this uh, pi here, and this introduced by Kumai and Potter in the paper in 2019. So now we we condense the uh, we we condense the dislocation uh, with this form. And the phase of this location transform uh, with this one because uh, it's coupled both to the the, the, the uh, tensor field and the uh, the gauge field. Okay. And then uh, we use uh, we do some kind of uh, uh, like gauge transformation to eliminate the. Uh, uh, I one one I I two two, and then uh, you seeing that uh, uh, we have the uh, new field after eating the gold stone, it it get mass. So from this equation, the phi i here is the phase of the the dislocation i after it's condensed, and then you you gap out on other field you have the the final Lagrangian. And this thing is the uh, effective theory of the of U1 field. And this thing is the uh, uh, Goldstone mode of uh, rotational symmetry. So after you condense uh, the dislocation, you go to the nematic phase, where it's only uh, few, uh, only uh, thing left is the uh, Goldstone of the rotational symmetry. So this thing is uh, the result. And in this, uh, uh, in this uh, final result, you 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 come up with a melting phase, with a nematic phase. You can also condense uh, only one of this uh, uh, this location. For example, you only condense uh, this location in x direction only to go to the schematic phase. And this dual theory also can cover this calculation. But uh, I don't have time to talk about this actually. Uh, and here is uh, my last slide summarized. So I derive the dual theory for vortex lattice. I demonstrate the photonic physics of the vortex, vortex lattice, and actually any kind of uh, uh, like elasticity have the photonic physics. The disclination cannot move, so this location can only move perpendicular to this direction. And also, I saw in that the dual theory too, we can uh, study the melting by condensed uh, dislocation. And uh, there's some other questions that we want to ask is the dual theory for elasticity in curved space. And this is the work that I'm working with Andre Gromov. And thank you. Oh, so the, the last part, uh, so basically my dream is the following. Uh, people now have a controversial about the fracton in curved space. So many people believe that there's no fracton in curved space, in, including Andre. So my idea is the following. When I, when I do the duality in, uh, in uh, elasticity in flat space, I found fracton. And I want to see if I do uh, the elasticity in curved space when I have the fracton in curved space or not? And the answer up to now is, is not. You will have the, I, I can rewrite the elasticity in curved space to the fracton theory in flat space. You just map the, the curved space, you can map to the flat space. Yeah.
Bunu nasıl şu haberde? Uh, in in this case, the thing that we do is that we 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 only we 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 uh, we have the, for example, we have the el elasticity on sphere, and then only the dislocation and this declination or other deform need to be stay in sphere. So I do not allow that to to jump. The dual chair is flat. So basically, you can think of this like um, somehow when you have the the, the curve space, you can you can you can you can have some 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 dislocation because of the of the topology. Yeah, contribute to curvature. You can have some some dislocation. Yeah. 